Hello everyone, you're watching episode 150 of Let's Plant. In the last episode, we were working on some sort of maintenance in the garden and that was in the form of chopping off flower stalks and setting them aside. Hi Nikki! So as you can see, I'm being joined by my lovely little assistant Nikki and while setting up she was very curious about my camera so I brought out my secondary camera so she would have something of her own to play with and as you can see we each have our own cameras but anyway in this episode I would like to go through my next few plans for my garden first of which is I want to do something about my patreon shrine we previously had a design for it, but everything changed when I added a pergola, so we would need to have a better look and see what we could do. So if you've been following this series, then you would know that I set up this pergola as a, some sort of shade structure for my plants as I've been doing every year. Only this pergola is going to be more permanent compared to my previous solutions. Previously, I would just dig down and uh, place some metal stakes on the ground. But the problem with that is that it takes a lot more time to set them up. Hmm. <laughs> so I thought of this solution, you know, a system that would save me a lot of time setting up and in this case I have been using eyelets on the, the shade cloth. I think I, could, I should just have to hook them in, no? And that would only take a few sec seconds of my time to set up. So yeah, it's a massive time saver for me. Boop. Unfortunately for me, placing this pergola here means that the entire layout and structure has changed. This means that I might have to switch things around a little bit. I would no longer be able to use the same design that I used before. If you recall, it was based on the idea of emulating the 12 Apostles. It is a rock formation out in regional Victoria. And for that, what I usually do or what I did in the past was to have a bunch of tall pots lining the middle, the, no, the middle back. And these are complemented by this large bowls here. So as I said, this pergola is getting in the way of the pots. So I might have to do a different design here. Of course, the easiest way to recover is just to maybe shift things around, see if it would fit. Maybe by placing the pots in a slightly different arrangement, it would still fit in. But, you know, this is another chance to overhaul this whole thing. So let's think about our options. One of the ideas that I've been playing around with is something that I have been sharing with my, with my workmates and that is maybe creating a cascade, you know, hanging plants, pla hanging plants and planters along this side and they would cascade down, maybe make some sort of a living wall arrangement. The problem is I do not want to affix anything onto the fence because again, it might, be, it might not be able to bear the entire load and yeah something might happen it might just move around topple around and the plants would fall so as an alternate solution what i would do is to make use of the pillars that i added here they are cemented into the ground basically basically i could just add a grid or maybe a bunch of um bunch of wood connecting these two here and between those i would be able to create some ledges where i could place some planters or makeshift planters made out of wood add some soil and maybe have some hanging plants or trailing plants such as string of pearls and I have a lot of them here. I think the string of pearls would do well in this area provided that I permanently keep the, the shade cloth at least on this structure and it's something that I've been considering because ever since I had the shade the plants are doing really well here. They have been recovering from their sun damage back well it's still summer but back during the heat waves. So, yeah, that's one of my plans. Something else that I have been thinking a lot about lately is that my imbricata are not doing so well in this area. And it's mainly because it, this, the ground, the soil here is a lot 
more organic compared to my usual mix as you can see it is regular soil mixed with a bit of scoria but there's still enough soil and enough fungus in the ground that you know these ones are not doing so well a lot of the gaps that you see here are used to be occupied by more imbricata which i have removed they got sick this one here is doing really well though so you know it seems like there are patches of or at least certain areas where these are not doing so well the surprising thing is the other echeverias here are thriving doing so well they are multiplying they are covering the entire area so this got me thinking that maybe maybe i should retire this imbricata here move them somewhere else and i'll be replacing it with another cultivar that's doing a lot better here here's my main choice if you look closely there are a bunch of echeveria here which are looking really nice and they are they kind of resemble the imbricata only they are more light they are more blue and they have a lovely red tip they look more precious than bricata so yeah and the surprising thing is these plants are doing a lot better in this type of ground in this type of soil compared to my imbricata so maybe i should remove my imbricata from this arrangement here and just replace them with this this is the echeveria cloudburst i have a lot of this around in the garden and they're pushing out a lot of pups I could separate the pups. Hi. Some of you might remember this spot. This is my tulip area. Well, there are tulips here, which is why the name. And since I am not yet doing anything here, I'm focusing on the Patreon shrine. We have been planting some of the, the excess or some of our pups in the ground. So there's a bunch of cloudburst here and a bunch of other plants. Right on this side, there are a bunch of imbricata in the ground. These are the paler ones, which tends to be smaller and more clumpy. And this is the large one. This is the dark, regular version. And I might keep them here since these ones at least are doing well. But all of these gaps that you see here used to be occupied by other Echeveria imbricata. And I pulled them out since they had been rotting in the past few days. So yeah, there's a bunch of spaces here to work on. And I think I'll be filling them up with other type of echeveria since this is the sea of blue i'm going to fill it up with more of my blue succulents blue rosettes and let me show you what they look like so i have several plants to choose from and i would like to show you the plants that are thriving in this area because at least we know that they do well here the first one would be this sedum cavatum they are tiny rosettes and they form nice clumps next up would be of course which i something that i've already shown you earlier the echeveria cloudburst this would replace my imbricata at least for this installation and behind them are some echeveria topsy-turvy these are the monstros or the upturned version of the ranyonii and moving along we have a bunch of echeveria domingo some elegance and subcorimbosa lau 26 and over the far left side we have clumps and clumps of echeveria elegance echeveria violet queen some a few larger rosettes such as the echeveria bluebird and this metiana and a bunch of colorata mexican giant now as i mentioned earlier i'm going to start by removing some of this dying imbricata they're not doing so well here so yeah replacing it with something that is more hardy in this pot is a good idea just loosening up the soil around it and that would allow me to pull it up as you can see the leaves are just falling off readily and that's because of all of the rot around yeah the stem is getting dark it's one down and one more to go there's one more imbricata here and this is the dark the more healthy one of the bunch but I'll be removing it for design reasons because it looks quite weird seeing we have this surrounded by other types of plants. So for consistency's sake, I'm going to remove this and relocate it to another part of the garden. I'm going to temporarily place it on the other side, which is basically another place where I used to have lots of aeoniums. This spot gets a lot more sunlight especially in the afternoon this is um, this 
well, I'm pointing towards the east, and that's the west, so the sun would be directly hitting this Echeveria, which is good because this likes lots of light, and the extra light, the extra sunlight, would make things dry out a lot easier, a lot faster. That means less chance, or at least, yeah, less chance of fungal rot, because things would dry up a lot easier. So you can see the soil is rather organic. There's not much scoria in here, but this would do well in this area as long as I make sure that it drains well. I think the soil is fairly loose enough and it's not clayey. It crumbles easily. So yeah, it might survive. We'll see. So you know I'm not kidding when I say I have a lot of them. Let's go pull up some of these plants and transplant them. You might notice that I have this Echeveria Orion in between all of this elegance and yeah I felt that they look similar in terms of texture and shape they only differ in color which is why I placed it here but Orion tends to be solitary and all of the elegance grew around it giving it little space so you know I think I'm doing it a favor by removing all of this elegance I think this is enough And what I want to do from here is just to separate this clump and plant them in. I might have to remove some of the dead leaves. That way they would have a lot more airflow. Because these things are freshly planted here and they would need some time to um, get established. And that means staying a bit dry. So yeah, giving them some airflow is a good way to make sure to, or at least a good way to help them achieve that goal of being established and I'm struggling with words now I'm a bit hungry <laughs> There's still some tiny gaps around this elegance, but you could easily fix that by adding some pops in between. And there's a lot more where they came from. We're done with the easy part of today's build and that is to fill up the gaps in the sea of blue. Now the rest of the things that I need to do are rather more involved and requires lots of planning. As I mentioned earlier, placing the ledges for the hanging plants. Another idea that I've been toying around for this pergola is making use of these beams. Basically I'll be placing a lot of hooks between or around them and I'll be hanging more plants underneath, more hanging baskets. That would make my design more vertical making use of a lot of this space and taking advantage of the shade cloth on top of them because i have no plans of removing this one i'll be removing the others that are draping the rest of the garden this will stay on for the rest of the year 
Now working on those hangers means that I would need to start thinking about propagating my trailing plants and well I don't I don't really collect them it's mainly my mother-in-law but I guess I could go hijack some of the plants you know just trim some some of them because they are they are growing really long anyway place them in place some cuttings in soil and wait for them to grow but until then I would have a lot of time that I could use to build uh, ledges and I'm still thinking of what sort of material I'll be using uh, an idea is just to use you know the traditional way which is gutters I bet you could probably visualize you know some sort of succulent wall and the little one is here again <laughs> so imagine having lots of string of pearls flowing down from here I think that would be nice and before she makes it here I have to get out now <sighs> <laughs> Let's go! Daddy, Sisa! Yeah, Sisa! So yeah, I think I could work on just using gutters. Gutters or PVC pipes. I was originally thinking of creating a wooden planter underneath but that might rot eventually and it might get heavy so yeah plastic or pvc would be a better idea <laughs> yeah i'm stuck here now since i can't do anything else for the rest of the afternoon i guess i'll see you in the next episode in the next episode we're going to think about more designs more options about our vertical garden in the future and if you have any suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. So subscribe if you want to see more, see where we're headed from this onwards. And yeah, I think Nikki wants to go down now. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Zach wants to ride the bike. Zach, do you want to go to the park? Yes. And what are you going to do in the park? Oh, the yellow slide. How about you, Nikki? Yellow slide. <laughs> okay.